In the last lecture, we discussed about the seismic hazard analysis. There are two types of seismic hazard analysis. One is deterministic seismic hazard analysis called DSHA. The other one is the probabilistic seismic hazard analysis called PSHA. We described uh, the DSHA with the help of an example and then outline different steps with the help of which we perform PSHA. Now, uh, the way the PSHA is calculated uh, will be explained with the help of this example. Before I go into the example, let me uh, repeat some of the basic formulas that are used for calculating the PSHA, which we discussed in the last lecture. The average rate of exceedance of earthquake of certain magnitude is given by Gutenberg relationship and this is lambda m is equal to 10 to the power a minus b m is equal to exponential of alpha minus beta m, where m is the magnitude of earthquake which is being exceeded. Now, using this rate, average rate of exceedance, one can find out the probability density function of the magnitude of earthquake occurring from a particular source of earthquake. And this is given by minus beta m minus m 0 divided by 1 minus minus beta m u minus m 0, where m u is the upper limit of the magnitude of earthquake or the maximum magnitude of earthquake that occurs in that uh, particular source and m 0 is the minimum earthquake or the minimum level of earthquake that we consider for the analysis and beta is the constant for this particular equation. Now, apart from that, we uh, used another equation that is the about the arrival of the earthquake. The arrival of the earthquake is modeled as a Poisson model. The temporal distribution of the occurrence of rather the recurrence of an earthquake for some magnitude is given by the recurrence relationship of the PMF that is lambda t to the power n into e to the power minus lambda t divided by n factorial, where the p n is equal to n uh, means the probability mass function that is the number of the event occurring is equal to n. Now, from this one can show that p n is equal to 1 will be equal to e to the power minus lambda t and probability of 
exceeding at least one event is given by this equation where e to the power minus lambda t is the probability of not exceeding uh, one event and probability of exceedance is given by 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t. So, this uh, particular equation were used uh, to find out the what is the probability of exceedance of a certain pre ground acceleration in a given period of time t. Now, we will use these equations uh, in the solution of this problem. The problem is the for the, the site which is shown in the figure 1.20 we have to uh, perform a typical calculation for P S H A and for that the attenuation relationship that we used for the case of D S H A that is the equation this equation L n P G A is equal to 6.74 plus 0 0.0859 m minus 1.80 ln of r plus 25 this attenuation relationship is will be used uh, here uh, with a standard deviation specified as sigma is equal to 0 0.57 as i told you this uh, attenuation relationship provides you the average value of the pga and uh, to this equation a standard deviation uh, is specified because it is assumed that the peak ground acceleration and for a given magnitude of earthquake varies log normally. The sources and the sites are shown in the figure. The uh, this is the site and source 1 is a line source, source 2 is a area source and source 3 is a point source. The recurrence law of the Gutenberg uh, which gives the uh, average rate of uh, accidents of certain magnitude of earthquake is given by this and uh, mind you this log is a of uh, base uh, 10. So, this is the average rate of the accidents of the uh, earthquake of magnitude m. So, this is equal to 4 minus m for the source 1 for source 2 it is 4.51 minus 1.2 m and for source 3 it is 3 minus uh, 0 0.8 m. The minimum value of the magnitude of earthquake is considered as 4. The maximum value of the magnitude of earthquake for each source uh, is given over here for source 1 it is 7.7, .7, for source 2 it is 5 and for the source 3 it is 7.3. Now, for each source we can calculate the epicentral distance assuming that for the line source and the area source the earthquake has a equal probability of occurrence at every point the or, or in other words we assume the it is a uniformly distributed that means distribution of the occurrence of earthquake over uh, the line source uh, or in the uh, area source uh, is assumed to be uniformly distributed. Now, first we take up the 
uh, first uh, uncertainty that is the location uncertainty. For the first source, we calculate the this will be the not minimum, this will be the maximum and this will be uh, not max, this will be minimum. The maximum epicentral distance calculated is 90.12. That means, if I join these two points, the uh, distance will be 90.12 and r minimum will be equal to if I draw a perpendicular from this side to this source, then that perpendicular uh, distance is 23.72. Now, we divide this uh, maximum r and the minimum r uh, into a 10 equal divisions, so that there is a pocket interval of certain value. Now, the epicentral distance would vary and if we assume that the line is divided into 1000 segments, then for each segment we can assume the center of the segment to be a source of earthquake and thus we will get 1000 values of the r. Now, these 1000 values of the r would lie between 23.72 to 90.12. So, we find out what is the probability of occurrence of the earthquake within a certain interval. That interval we obtain by uh, dividing the maximum value uh, minus the minimum value by 10. So, counting the total number of radi radial distances lying within each interval, we can find out the probability of occurrence of uh, the uh, epicentral distance lying within certain interval. And the middle point of the interval is taken as the radial distance. So, here for example, for the first source the uh, probability of occurrence of earthquake with epicentral distance of 27.04 is about 0.336. Similarly, uh, for a radial distance of 33.68, the probability if occurrence is about uh, 0.18. So, in this way one can calculate the probability of occurrence of an earthquake for a uh, what we call uh, specified epicentral distance. The same kind of calculation is performed for source 2. Here again we find out the maximum distance and the this will be the minimum distance. So, this maximum and minimum distance this interval is again divided into 10 equal division and assuming uh, that the area is divided into 2500 parts of size 2 into 1.2 meter and assuming that the center of each one of these uh, sub areas of 2 into 1.2 is a point of uh, earthquake, then we can have 2500 epicentral distances for uh, the source 2. And these 2500 epicentral distances uh, can be now categorized into uh, 10 divisions that you have obtained and 
we can find out the probability of occurrence of an earthquake with epicentral distance as specified uh, for the middle of the uh, what you call middle of the uh, interval. So, here say the epicentral distance 47.67 has a probability of occurrence nearly as point, uh, zero 0.02. So, uh, and uh, 59.24 has a probability uh, of occurrence of about 0 0.03. In the same way, uh, the third uh, uh, probability of occurring uh, earthquake with a certain epicentral distance for the third source can be computed, but uh, it is seen here that since it is a point source, then it involves only one uh, epicentral distance. So, the epicentral distance is since it is 1, so the probability of its occurrence is 1. Next we find out the size uncertainty. The occurrence rate of the earthquake is given uh, by this formula that is this formula. So, here uh, we get the value of a as 4 and b is equal to 1. For this value of a is equal to uh, 4.51 and the value of b is equal to 1.2 and for this the value of a is 3 and value of b is equal to 0.8 uh, for the equation that uh, I have written on the top. So, using this equation one can find out the value of uh, lambda 1 uh, or rather nu 1, nu 2 and nu 3. This is same as lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. So, uh, assuming the maximum uh, magnitude of earthquake and uh, the minimum magnitude of earthquake as 4, one can calculate the what is the uh, exceedance rate of the minimum magnitude of earthquake for different sources. So, they are uh, 1.501 and 0 0.631 respectively. Uh, note that here the magnitude of earthquake that we put into this equation is the minimum magnitude of earthquake that uh, we have specified, because the exceedance of the earthquake of certain magnitude of earthquakes means here that at least the uh, exceedance would be considered for the minimum magnitude of earthquake. Now, for each source zone again, uh, we can calculate the probability of occurrence of certain magnitude of earthquake between two intervals that is m 1 and m 2. And uh, this can be determined by integrating the probability density function f m, which is shown again here. Uh, this probability density function can be computed using this equation and integrating this equation from m 1 to m 2 and this integration leads to this particular equation that is the magnitude of earthquake occurring between an interval of m 1 and m 2. 
So, for source zone 1, a max and a minimum are divided uh, again into 10 divisions and center of the division uh, is considered as uh, one magnitude. That way, uh, we get 10 such magnitudes and one can find out the probability of uh, occurrence of certain magnitude of earthquake and that magnitude of earthquake will, uh, will be referred to the magnitude which lies at the center of the division. So, probability of occurrence of that magnitude of earthquake can be obtained for source 1, source 2 and source 3. For all the three sources, one can have uh, this uh, probability of occurrence of the magnitude of certain earthquake. Now, once uh, they are calculated, then let us say we are interested in finding out the probability of exceedance of 0.01 g. So, what we do is that uh, for the probability of exceedance of 0.01 g for a magnitude of earthquake level 4.19 and an epicentral distance of 27.04 or for source zone 1 can be calculated from the histograms that I have shown. For example, for a magnitude of earthquake of 4.19 that means the center of the first interval of the uh, magnitude of earthquake that we obtain for source zone 1 is equal to 4.19. So, for that the probability of occurrence is equal to 0 0.551. Similarly, the probability of occurrence of the epicentral distance uh, of 27.04. Again, 27.04 is the center of the first interval of the epicentral distance that we computed for source zone 1 and that was computed as 0.336. For example, here one can see the, so this is the center uh, of the division for, uh, for this center the probability of occurrence is about 0.336. Now, once uh, these uh, two probabilities are obtained, then we find out the probability of peak ground acceleration being greater than 0.01 g condition upon magnitude of earthquake is equal to 4.19 and epicentral distance is equal to 27.04 that we obtained over here. That is obtained from this relationship that is 1 minus F z z. Now, this F z z is the normalized distribution of the peak ground acceleration. Normalized distribution means the uh, this distribution refers to the uh, any peak ground acceleration minus say any peak ground acceleration P g a minus is average value divided by its standard deviation. This is the quantity z. Now, the one can find out this normalized quantity and since it is uh, assumed that the peak ground acceleration log normally varies, therefore, uh, this normalized quantity also varies log normally. And uh, there are standard tables from where one can find out the this probability function that is f z z for a given value of the z. Now, if we calculate the 
value of z uh, for 0 0.01 g, then this 0 0.01 g is first converted into centimeter per second square unit, because the attenuation relationship that uh, we have used in that the PGA value is calculated uh, with a unit of centimeter per second square. So, therefore, uh, converting this into a centimeter per second square and then uh, finding out uh, the uh, its probability, uh, one can uh, get the z value as minus 1.65 and from the table one can get the value of f z z and this leads to a probability of exceedance of 0.01 g as 0.951. So, uh, we see that the calculation follows like this, first we find out the uh, probability uh, uh, of occurrence of certain magnitude of earthquake from the equation that is given for source 1, then probability of occurrence of certain epicentral distance again from uh, by considering that the earthquake uh, can happen at any point within the line source or in the area source and uh, from there we can calculate the probability of occurrence of certain epicentral distance and uh, they are plotted as histograms. And for those uh, uh, combination of m and r, one can find out the peak ground acceleration exceeding a value of 0.01 g conditioned upon uh, these two quantities. And for obtaining the uh, this uh, exceedance value, we assume that the PGA is varying no log normally. So, from standard log normal tables, uh, one can get the value of f z z and one can calculate this uh, quantity. Now, uh, if we wish to find out the value of of the uh, uh, rate of exceedance of a PGA level of 0.01 g, then we use uh, the summation equation that uh, we have uh, uh, shown before. That is the summation equation that is. Uh, yeah, shown here, uh, we uh, integrate or sum up. In this case, integration will be, uh, will be replaced by summation. So, uh, we will be summing up uh, the product of these quantities that is probability of exceedance of certain level of peak ground acceleration conditioned upon a given set of value of m and r and then multiply it by the probability of occurrence of this particular m and probability of occurrence of this particular r. So, uh, these quantities are multiplied and then we sum up uh, for all the events. So, here uh, first we make this multiplication. Uh, and this multiplication turns out to be 0 0.176. And in this, the uh, rate of occurrence of earthquake greater than magnitude uh, m is equal to r, that is new one that also we have calculated. So, we multiply this entire thing with new one and the result is 0 0.176. So, the annual rate of accidents of a peak ground acceleration of 0.01 g turns out to be 0 0.176 for source 1 given a pair of value of magnitude 4.19 and r is equal to 27.04. Now, since we have made 10 intervals for the magnitudes and 10 intervals for the epicentral distance, 
these intervals were obtained uh, by uh, uh, deducting the minimum value from the maximum value and dividing it by 10. Uh, we have 10 intervals of magnitude of earthquake or 10 combinations of magnitude of earthquake and 10 combinations of epicentral distance. So, we have got total 100 such combination. So, out of that we ha have just taken only one. So, lambda 0.01 g for other 99 combinations of m and r can be obtained for source 1 and they can be summed up for source zone 2 and 3 similar calculations can be found out. Finally, we get the value of the rate of exceedance of PGA 0.01 g equal to that what we will get for source 1, source 2 and source 3 they will be summed together and we will get finally the uh, value of this quantity lambda 0.01 g. Now, we can consider next a peak ground acceleration level of 0.02 g, then 0.03 g, then 0.04 g and so on. So, for different levels of peak ground acceleration, we can find out the lambda value and this lambda value then can be plotted against different levels of the peak ground acceleration and this will give a curve and that curve co is called the seismic hazard curve for peak ground acceleration for the region. Now, uh, with uh, this particular quantity known that means the seismic hazard curve for peak ground acceleration or for any other earthquake measurement uh, parameter if we have a seismic hazard curve, then for a given level of, of the uh, seismic measurement parameter, one can find out what is the annual probability exceedance of that level of the parameter. Then uh, one can consider also what is the probability of exceedance in t years of time by using uh, the uh, equation, uh, this equation that we have obtained. So, this equation provides the uh, exceedance rate of say for example, exceedance of a peak ground acceleration level what is the, uh, the probability of exceedance of uh, a peak ground uh, acceleration level of y bar can be obtained using this equation where uh, the lambda is equal to lambda y bar that is the, uh, the lambda value that we calculated and is shown in the form of the seismic hazard curve. So, uh, uh, using this temporal uh, relationship of the occurrence of earthquake, one can and calculate what is the probability of exceedance of certain level of say peak ground acceleration in t years of time for a region. So, this is uh, about uh, the piece PSHA and therefore, uh, we can see that by uh, drawing some uh, what, uh, what you call the uh, histograms showing the probability of occurrence of magnitude of earthquake and probability of occurrence of certain epicentral distance and using uh, the pertinent equations, one can obtain the seismic hazard curve for a particular region drawn for a seismic measurement parameter. The seismic measurement parameter could be a peak ground acceleration or peak ground displacement 
peak ground velocity or for that matter any other earthquake measurement uh, parameter. Now, let us look into the next example which is a very a simple straightforward example in order to clarify the temporal distribution of the earthquake which is assumed to be a Poinsot model. So, here uh, the problem is the seismic hazard curve for a region shows that annual rate of accidents of an acceleration 0 0.25 g due to earthquake is 0 0.02 that is lambda 0 0.25 g is given as 0 0.02. So, from the hazard curve that is plotted for the region we get particular uh, this value. So, this is given. Now, what we have to find out is that what is the probability that exactly one such event that means only one uh, event where the 0.25 g of uh, the peak, uh, peak ground acceleration uh, will take place in 30 years and the other one is that what is the probability that at least one such event uh, that is one such event means at least once uh, this peak ground level will be exceeded in 30 years of time. Also find the value of lambda that has a probability 10 percent probability of exceedance in 50 years of time. That means, one has to calculate what is the value of this lambda uh, uh, for a 10 percent exceedance in 50 years of time. So, the answer to the first is the probability of occurrence of only one event such event is given by uh, the equation that we have written. Uh, this is the equation probability of occurrence of only one event and we uh, put the appropriate value. The value of uh, lambda is given as 0 0.02, the time period is 30 years and uh, then it will be power minus lambda uh, t. So, that gives a result of 33 percent. So, uh, the answer to the first uh, question that is the probability of uh, occurrence of one event is 33 percent the probability of at least once exceedance is given by again uh, this equation and here we put the values that is uh, lambda value as 0 0.02 and the uh, time as 30 years and we get it as 45.2 uh, percent. Now, this equation can be rewritten in the form of e to the power minus lambda t is equal to 1 minus p n greater than equal to 1. So, ln lambda t will be equal to ln of 1 minus p n greater than equal to 1. Here we ignore the sign because the negative value for the occurrence uh, rate that really does not make any meaning. So, therefore, and this ln will be equal to lambda t from there we can get the value of lambda is equal to this divided by t. So, that is what uh, has been used here uh, the ln so the, the, the occurrence exceedance occurrence rate lambda will be equal to ln of 1 minus p n 
greater than or equal to 1 divided by t and this is given as 0 0.1 that is the fine lambda that has a probability of exceedance of 10 percent. So, 10 percent and the time is 50 years. So, that is what we have done. So, 10 percent is 0 0.1 and time is 50 years and the lambda is calculated as 0 0.0021. So, therefore, uh, 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 given the seismic hazard curve, one can find out the probability of occurrence of just one event and at, uh, exceedance of at least one event and uh, given the probability of exceedance uh, uh, for or, or the uh, earthquake for a given period, one can fi find out what is the average rate of exceedance, the value of lambda uh, that you have calculated in the uh, second problem. Now, uh, let us come to the seismic risk at a site. Seismic risk at a site is similar to that of seismic hazard uh, determination. Now, the seismic risk means that uh, again what is the probability of exceedance of certain earthquake measurement parameter. Now, based on that one can assess the seismic risk for a site and uh, one can also bring in the period uh, into picture that is one can say what is the probability of exceedance of certain uh, level of earthquake measurement parameter say peak ground acceleration in 50 years of time or 100 years of time. So, in that case uh, the previous example that you have done uh, that kind of uh, example would be useful. So, uh, uh, by definition the seismic risk is that probability of uh, certain uh, parameter say this is peak ground acceleration exceeding a particular uh, level uh, during certain period and generally we take that period as one year. So, that we can say that it is the annual probability of exceedance and the inverse of this annual uh, probability of exceedance or inverse of this risk uh, is called the return period. The study of seismic risk requires source mechanism parameters that is the focal depth, orientation of fault etcetera, recurrence relationship which is used to find out the probability density function of the magnitude of earthquake that is what we have seen before and the attenuation relationships. Uh, again uh, we have used this attenuation relationship in connection with PSHA. Now, using this information one can obtain the seismic risk uh, either using a, a calculation like probabilistic seismic hazard uh, calculation or using a Cornell's or Milne and Davenport's approach. So, they were uh, certain there were certain methods which were uh, the classic uh, classical methods and they were proposed by Cornell and uh, Devonport. Using uh, their concept many empirical equations uh, were obtained with the help of data information for a particular region. For a particular region these empirical equations uh, have been developed. If we wish to use them for some other region then the uh, constants uh, of the equation or the values of the different parameters that have been used that values must be accordingly adjusted. Now, I am giving you some equations uh, over here, but many more equations are available of this nature and they are all given in the book. The first equation uh, talks of the uh, annual uh, 
occurrence of a particular event that is the number of the say uh, magnitude of earthquake or peak ground acceleration of earthquake exceeding a value of y s. So, y s in general it indicates a earthquake measurement parameter. So, let us say it is peak ground acceleration for our problem. So, then what is the annual rate on, uh, at, of occurrence of a event specified by the exceedance of certain level of peak ground acceleration. So, the, that number is given by this equation y s my divided by c bar to the power minus p bar. So, here c bar and p bar they are the constants and these constants are obtained from the regional data and y s say here is a level of the peak ground acceleration. The next equation shows uh, the probability of exceedance of a maximum magnitude of earthquake say maximum magnitude of earthquake is specified by m 1 then the probability of exceedance of that magnitude maximum magnitude of earthquake is given again by a equation like this where alpha 1 beta uh, are the constants and alpha 1 is related to the period of observation T 0 and another constant alpha. Uh, this equation shows the probability of exceedance of the intensity of an earthquake. So, probability of exceedance of an intensity of earthquake uh, for a level small i 1 uh, is given by an equation like this. Again, this is an empirical equation, all of them are all em empirical equation, empirical equation. So, uh, here uh, these values 1.54 and 47, they, these values are obtained for a particular region. Uh, say uh, if the data is from United States, so for, for, for some region in USA, uh, these particular values are valid. For other regions, one has to calculate the appropriate values of these parameters. Uh, this equation shows the uh, proba uh, probability uh, of uh, the magnitude of earthquake. So, the magnitude of earthquake lying between an upper limit and a lower limit, uh, the probability of the magnitude being less than equal to m 1. So, that is given by an equation like this, where m 1 is the magnitude in question, the probability of which you are trying to find out, that is what is the probability of the magnitude of earthquake being less than m 1. So, that is what we are trying to find out. So, this is m 1 and m u refers to the maximum magnitude of earthquake and m 0 is the minimum magnitude of earthquake that you consider for the analysis. And if we know the uh, what is the probability of the magnitude of earthquake being less than equal to certain value, then one can calculate what is the probability of exceedance of the magnitude of earthquake for the same value of uh, the magnitude that will be 1 minus this quantity. Uh, now, the uh, using this equation, if I in this equation if we put the value of m u to be very large, then uh, this turns out to be almost equal to 1, this one and as a result of that one can simplify this equation to this particular form. That means, probability of the magnitude of earthquake being greater than equal to m 1 is equal to 1 minus uh, e to the power minus beta m 1 minus m 0. So, that comes from this particular uh, uh, equation. So, that way uh, we have uh, many such empirical 
equation which talks of the probability of occurrence or probability of exceedance of a certain level of the earthquake parameters uh, in a particular region and they are called the seismic risk for the region. Uh, next we come to a very important uh, topic uh, uh, the microzonation using the hazard analysis. Now the microzonation uh, uh, is a very useful concept for mitigating the uh, earthquake disaster in a particular region and for that uh, one should have uh, a map for the region showing the relative vulnerability of the different uh, sub regions uh, in that particular area. Uh, the concept basically is like this say we take a, a city or a metropolitan area and divide it into a number of sub areas. And the center of the sub areas are the points in question. So, here we at these points we attach some value which indicates the vulnerability of certain parameter that we will now discuss. So, the microzonation say we are wanting to find out with respect to the probability density you know, uh, or the sorry population density. So, what we do that uh, in this region we calculate the population density and that way for all these uh, places we calculate the population density of the region and then what we do the points which are uh, having the same similar popular density they are grouped together and from this grouping one can come out with areas showing uh, the population density that means in this this area has a one kind of population density this area is having another kind of population density and so on. So, uh, this will be called a microzonation map of the city with respect to population density. Similarly, one can construct a microzonation map of a city for construction. So, uh, a city can be divided into uh, the uh, type of construction that is a bad construction, good con construction or medium type of construction and one can have a microzonation map. Similarly, for the old structure, uh, new structure, relatively old structure we can have uh, can have these kinds of categories and then one can have a uh, microzonation map for the type of uh, the structures that is existing in the city. Uh, so, now this concept can be extended to the microzonation of a region with respect to peak ground acceleration and the amplification factor uh, uh, of the uh, ground motion due to soil condition. So, that is uh, these two parameters are very important because for design purposes one should know uh, what is in each uh, sub region, uh, what is the peak ground acceleration for which the structure should be designed uh, in this region and uh, what is the likely amplification factor uh, for that region uh, because of the soil condition. So, if these two informations are there uh, then one can and go ahead uh, with uh, a safe design of structures uh, for those regions. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, what is done in a microzonation. So, now let us uh, try to formally uh, define the microzonation. 
Microgeneration is delineation of a region of a big city into different parts with respect to seismic hazard potential. Various parameters indicating hazard potential are used to microzone, the area like local soil characteristics, earthquake source properties, epicentral distance, topography, population density, types of construction, etc. With respect to each parameter, a map may be prepared. They are then combined by giving weightages to each parameter to arrive at a hazard index. So, for each one of the sub area, one can uh, calculate an hazard index uh, uh, by uh, giving weightages to each one of these parameters. Although each parameter has its own importance, soil amplification, earthquake source properties, epicentral distance are considered very important parameters to denote seismic risk or hazard of a particular region. DSHA or PSHA combined with soil amplification are quite often used to prepare a microgeneration map. The steps include divide the region into a number of bits considering variation of soil properties as I have shown here. Uh, then at the center of each grid find PGA either by DSHA or PSHA procedure giving the probability of accidents in the case of PSHA. And then for each one of the site that is the center of the grid, one can find out the PGA amplification by performing a one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional wave propagation analysis that is what we discussed before. Uh, and multiply the PGAs that you have obtained and for the uh, from the DSHA or PSHA analysis um, uh, by the amplification factor and accordingly can prepare a microgeneration map. So, a deterministic microgeneration map for peak ground acceleration is shown over here uh, in this figure. Uh, you can see that this particular region is controlled by this PGA. This uh, region is controlled by uh, this PGA and so on. And therefore, if we have to construct a building, then the uh, building should be uh, designed uh, with a uh, PGA of 0.4 G. Uh, this one shows the probabilistic microzonation. Here, the numbers over here associated with each sub region shows the probability of accidents of 0.25 g level of peak ground acceleration is 10 percent. So, we take 10 percent uh, probability of accidents that is 10 percent risk and based on that one can design the buildings uh, with this uh, peak ground acceleration. So, let me uh, uh, summarize at this stage uh, what we discussed today. We have discussed a problem uh, in which uh, we have shown how probabilistic seismic hazard analysis can be carried out and it uh, uses uh, some of the equations, uh, probability equations and a uh, attenuation law and by drawing certain histograms and uh, using certain summation uh, over all the sources one can find out uh, a, a what is known as a seismic hazard card for the region showing the pro annual probability of accidents of certain earthquake measurement parameter with respect to the level of that earthquake measurement parameter. Uh, then uh, we have discussed about the seismic risk uh, expressions which are available in the literature for different quantities say magnitude of earthquake, intensity of earthquake of peak ground acceleration and uh, you will get uh, in books and in the web sites also a host of such empirical equations. Uh, if we do not have any particular uh, data systematic data available for a particular site, then one can use one of these uh, empirical equations expressing the seismic hazard or seismic risk at a particular site. 
uh, then we discussed about the microzonation of a particular region, what microzonation means and how a microzonation of a uh, region or a city can be obtained for uh, a given level of for uh, different levels of peak ground acceleration or the probability of occurrence of, of the peak ground acceleration. And also uh, in that we include uh, the amplification effect due to soil condition. Thank you. Thank you.